Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ursula. I'm an indie author of historical fiction and I've been an avid reader since I was three years old. Most of my interest is in classic world literature. I also read a great deal of um, Jewish fiction and religious books. Today I should like to introduce you to the um, religious Jewish books which I currently have in my possession. Unfortunately, the majority of my books of all sorts are in storage 900 miles away. It's a very long story why that happened and why they haven't been um, shipped down to me by now. It's, you know, better to say nothing than say something that's unflattering to certain people. And then the books in um, storage include the um, Gunter Plaut Humash from the Reform Movement. I was originally involved in the Reform Movement when I started going to synagogue at 18 years old. The um, late Jonas, Rabbi Jonathan, Jonathan Sachs um, commentary on the Torah, like an old um, book of Samuel, the little booklet for the Birkat HaHama, the Blessing of the Sun, which is a mitzvah that takes place every 28 years. A bunch of um, starter books for learning Hebrew I got when I was 18 years old. And, um, um, a Bencher, the little book for um, Grace After Meals. So a lot of books I really miss, including all like, for example, all my Herman Hesse novels and most of my, um, all, probably all my Russian literature, all sorts of books I really miss. I hope they can come to me soon. So let's get on with the vlog. So this is my Sidur, or sometimes it's pronounced Sidur. I bought this in a March 2017 trip to Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Originally, I was more interested in a larger sized um, prayer book in Teal, but unfortunately that was in Hebrew only, and I can't read um, Hebrew very well except for like basic prayer book Hebrew and I found this at another store they also had um, prayer books in like light purple and pink but I those colors were too girly for me I'm a proud tomboy so and this was I love the color purple and it has like basically pretty much everything you could want in it the prayers for Shabbos and holidays little um, like some tour readings in the back customs laws and things I personally am not um Lubavitch, but I have like davened, prayed at many um, Lubavitch services in the past. And I personally, I straddle the fence between conservative and orthodoxy. And it's um, very useful to have your own prayer book. Now this, um, I, this was a present from one of my um, professors when I was um, thinking about possibly becoming a teacher and I was studying early childhood education. I guess I must have mentioned being Jewish in some of the papers I wrote. She was really impressed with like everything I wrote. She could see I was a very good writer and she realized, you know, still waters run deep. You know what they say about those quiet ones. And I guess she had gotten this from someone and realized I could get better use out of it than she would because she herself wasn't Jewish. Now this is really good to, I actually forgot I had this book and it's a commentary on the Parsha, the weekly Torah portion through um, women's eyes because obviously I Traditionally, only like, you know, men did commentaries or people only considered, you know, what the men of the tour were thinking about or doing. And it has like insights from various women in the Bible and in the Talmud, like Hagar, Sarah, Rahel, Leah, and it provides like appellations. Everybody like um, Mother Rachel, Baruria, the scholar, Dina, the wounded one, Mo Mother Sarah. And it'll be very good to go through this because the cycle of reading the tour is beginning. Although, unfortunately, because of lockdown, I've been unable to go to synagogue since March of 2020. But at least I can read this on my own. Although, this book was published in 1996. So there are a couple of things that are kind of like dated a little bit. Like, for example, I came across this one line that how it pains us to see our children disfigure themselves with piercings and with scars obviously body modification because I'm a huge way since 1996 it's much more socially acceptable now for example like I don't think most people object to my um, nose stud on my left um, nostril or I currently have nine ear piercings in Baruch Hashem I just found out there's a certified professional piercing studio in my area that just came here in the last two years and I'm really looking forward to getting some more ear piercings from them and I re do not consider myself mutilated or disfigured because I have many ear piercings and nostril piercing and will hopefully be getting my navel piercing redone soon so if you think body modifications are disgusting what are you doing here you know get off my channel if you think I'm disgusting 
And then next I have a book of um, Tehillim, Psalms, as Christians would call a Psalter. This was also a present to me at the end of um, summer camp. The first year I was working at um, Camp Gan Israel, it's a Lubavitch day camp for about ages 3 to 12. The, um, Rebbitson, the who was the co-director of the camp at that time, gave it to me as at the end of the summer party that we have. She was, you know, very pleased with all the work I did and at the camp. They called me by my um my actually my Hebrew name is Hannah Esther Daphna, but they called me Hannah Esther at that camp. Oh, and by the way, I wrote my name in Hebrew at the beginning of my um sitter because you can see. Unfortunately, I, I never learned how to read um, or write um, Hebrew cursive, which is kind of ironic because most the majority of my handwriting in English and in Russian is in cursive. But hopefully, well, I will have to learn, obviously, Hebrew cursive when I make Aliyah because that's just how adults write or just everybody writes in Israel. And um, there's lots of um, traditions about saying the Psalms, what you should say when or for what occasions or psalms corresponding to the letters in your name. You can um, look that up if you want some more information about that. And I also have a, oh, Psalm 116 has been particularly dear to me since my car accident. I can really relate to the lines like, the cords of death encompassed me, the grave held me in its grip, because I really did believe I was about to die at the age of 23 when I was run over by that car. Now this is um, a Haggadah, the book you use for the, um, Passover Seder, I bought this, I believe it was in Svat, Israel in 2010, on my um, third and current most recent trip to Israel. At the time, I was um, involved in a relationship with someone whom I was later supposedly engaged to. That's a long, weird story. In it. But anyway, I assumed we would be using this at our um, coming family and Seders. And there's lots of space to write, like, who was at the Seder and what year. And there's all beautiful artwork and historical artifacts and photographs like from Shoah survivors, early Olim immigrants to the land of Israel, and it spotlights people from who came from all over the world back to our indigenous homeland because the Jewish people are an ethno-religious group. We are indigenous to the land of Judea, contrary to what people on the um, extreme far left have been slandering and saying, lying about us. And it shows that Jews came from all over the world. We didn't just magically originate out of nowhere in 19th century Eastern Europe, believe it or not. And to have a lot of wonderful um, pictures, as I said, just really telling a wonderful story about how these people had this longing to return to our ancient homeland and, you know, make a home there and start life there in the, only, the world's only majority Jewish nation state. And this is, I got this as a present from my original synagogue when I was 18 years old, the week before I turned 19. It's a tradition, it's a tra translation of the Bible. The, um, Jewish people, I'm not saying this to like insult anyone or tell you how to stop speaking. I'm just stating a fact. Personally, like Jewish people do not use the terms Old and New Testament. We just call our Bible the Bible of the Tanakh. It stands for um, Torah, Netuvim, Prophets, and Ketuvim, writing. So, you know, like they're basically it goes up to the second book of chronicles we and we call the christian bible just like the christian bible or more specifically the gospels or specific books of it and unfortunately um it's kind of sad to see i wrote my name and the date i received it the 11th of december 1998 in the beginning i was just about to turn 19 years old and i assumed naively i would find a husband have children by the age of 25 if not younger and here i am 41 i'm still single and haven't had any children but i hopefully will have children before time runs out um a few months ago i read lucille ball's autobiography which was very good and i would recommend although towards the end she kind of tells a big lie and pretends her second husband is only a few years younger he was a lot younger than that but i can understand given the era why she would feel the need to lie about that and she said she appreciated her children a lot more because she had them in her 40s instead of like 18, 21, even 30, and she waited so long to become a mother, and she, like, really appreciated that good things do come to those who wait, and my Italian great-great-grandmother was born, was an only child born when her mother was 47 years old, and this was obviously over a century before IVF and modern technologies like that existed, so this was, like, a miracle, and hopefully I will have children before time runs out, but if I don't 
I'm not blessed with biological children. I will adopt them. I've long been very moved by how um, Harpo Marx and his wife Susan adopted all four of their children, and I've always wanted to adopt in addition to have bio, having biological children, and I would not consider adopted children any less my children than actual blood children. Now, the final things. This was also a gift from the Rebbitson who got me the Tehillim, the Book of Psalms. They're um, commentaries, all five books of the Torah with them. Um, Rashi's commentary in them. They're kind of old. I guess she was giving them away because they were old, but they're still um, very useful. Rashi, if you don't know, was a 11th century um, French commentator of the Torah and the Talmud and many other things. And um, famously, if maybe you don't know the story or not, he taught all three of his daughters, you know, Torah and Talmud, which uh, particularly the Talmud was particularly unusual. At that time, and according to tradition, they um, wore talit, um, prayer shawl, and wrapped to fill in the phylacteries, which like the little box on your head and on your arm. And, you know, he just would write commentaries on each parsha, little bit by bit, as you can see, line by line. He had a special script for also for writing. He was one of our um, greatest scholars and sages, although it does use the old-fashioned Elizabethan translation for these things, but you I have to like look past that and see what's actually being said, even if that is extremely difficult to read for most people. And, you know, you can't really just read the Torah and be done with it. You should always study some commentaries for greater insights and to see what's really being said. And I would uh, obviously encourage you, if you are Jewish, to get some commentary to study with because, you know, it's, you can't, you need a friend to or just a commentary to learn more about these things. And hopefully I will be getting my books out of storage by obviously next year at the time they will be back in my possession, Baruch Hashem. So I'll be, so hopefully we'll be doing a vlog possibly on Sunday. I might be talking about one of the books I've written or something just of general writing advice, my own writing journey, or maybe doing some more book reviews. Hopefully I'm becoming more confident on camera over time, so I look forward to seeing you guys then. But thanks. Bye.